Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White IV, and for my father, Daniel White III, with the second coming watch update. This is update number 480. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to the Times of Israel, as nuclear talks resume between Iran and world powers, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that the Islamic Republic remains aggressive and brutal and is complicit in the Syrian regime's murder of its citizens. Netanyahu said on Tuesday morning during a tour of the Golan Heights, I would like to tell the world today, as the talks between the major powers and Iran are being resumed, that Iran has changed neither its aggressive policy nor its brutal character. Iran is continuing to support the Assad regime, which is slaughtering its own people. This is the true face of Iran. The world cannot forget this. Netanyahu made his comments at an IDF base where injured Syrians are receiving medical care. Defense Minister Moshe Yalan and IDF Chief of Staff Major General Benny Gantz were on hand as well. Second, according to the Associated Press, Iran drew a red line on Tuesday on how far it would go at landmark nuclear talks, saying as the meeting opened that it would not buckle to pressure from the U.S. and five other world powers to scrap any of its nuclear facilities. The statement by Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Arakchi suggested tough talks ahead, constituting a rejection of essential demand by the six countries. At the same time, neither side can afford to have the talks fail. Lack of agreement will leave Iran struggling under the weight of harsh economic sanctions and a threat of military strikes by Israel, which sees Iran's nuclear program as an unacceptable security threat, primarily designed to develop weapons. Third, according to the Associated Press, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake struck northeast of Barbados early on Tuesday, jolting thousands from their sleep but causing no reported damages or casualties. It also was felt in the nearby French Caribbean island of Martinique. Barbados Police Constable Chris Gregg told the Associated Press that the earthquake was felt throughout the island. In Martinique, officials said no damage or injuries had been reported either. Fourth, according to Reuters, Pakistan warned Iran on Tuesday not to send troops across the country's shared border to retrieve five kidnapped Iranian border guards an incident that threatens to exacerbate regional and sectarian tensions. On Monday, Iranian Interior Minister Abdel Reza Rahmani Fazli was quoted as saying that Iran might consider sending its forces onto Pakistani soil if Pakistan did not take the steps necessary to fight against militants. The Pakistani government statement said, Iranian forces have no authority to cross our borders in violation of international law. We must respect each other's borders. Predominantly Shiite Iran says militants seized the guards about three miles inside of Iran on February 6 in the province of Sistan, Baluchistan, and took them into Pakistan. Fifth, according to the Associated Press, some of the Navy's futuristic weapons sound like something out of Star Wars, with lasers designed to shoot down aerial drones and electric guns that fire projectiles at hypersonic speeds. That future is now. The Navy plans to deploy its first laser on a ship later this year, and it intends to test an electromagnetic railgun prototype aboard a vessel within two years. For the Navy, it's not so much about the whiz-bang technology as it is about the economics of such armaments. Both cost pennies on the dollar compared with missiles and smart bombs, and the weapons can be fired continuously, unlike missiles and bombs which eventually run out. Captain Mike Zeev, Program Manager for Directed Energy and Electric Weapon Systems for the Naval Sea Systems Command, said, It fundamentally changes the way we fight. Jesus Christ said in Revelation 22, 12, and 13, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Our second coming quote today is from G. Campbell Morgan. He said, To me, the second coming is the perpetual light on the path, 
which makes the present bearable. I never lay my head on the pillow without thinking that perhaps before the morning breaks, the final morning may have dawned. I never begin my work without thinking that he may interrupt my work and begin his own. This is now his word to all believing souls, till I come. We are not looking for death, we are looking for him. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, so that you can live eternally with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Don't